I would like all of us to devote our thoughts to a very special person whose passing last year meant a huge loss for humanity, my dear friend, President Shimon Peres. So there is hardly any other person who better embodies the spirit of Davos than Shimon. Shimon was a true global statesman who worked tirelessly for peace, exuded optimism, and was always looking to the future. I have known and worked with Shimon for many years and seen him in different situations and contexts. Allow me to share with you a few forum memories of him that I think are emblematic of his larger life and legacy. I vividly remember Shimon as a skillful and committed diplomat and policymaker, as foreign minister and prime minister of Israel in the 1990s, Shimon was behind some of the most complex negotiations of the Middle East and critical for the early success of the Oslo summits. He was also a courageous leader, willing to take risks and leaps for, of faith for the sake of his nation, for the sake of the region, and peace. Many of you will recall when Shimon and Yasser Arafat came hand in hand onto this stage. And I was told that many of you at that moment had tears in the eyes. There are few statesmen who, through their character, vision, and values, are a true inspiration and role model for all generations. Shimon Peres was one of those rare individuals. He leaves a tremendous legacy that we are all encouraged to build on for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to play a video for you reminding us of key short moments with President Shimon Peres. After that, it will be my pleasure to welcome on the stage the son of President Peres, Jaime Peres, to share some words. I'm 90 years old. I never lost anything by believing or by hoping. Democracy nowadays is not just the right to be equal, but the equal right to be different. Our greatness comes from technology and science, from the human being. The secret in every cell of our brain is maybe greater than the secrets of the moon. We have been there. There is no country anymore in the world that can do anything alone, whether we like it or not. Peace is a little bit like love. You have to close a little bit your eyes <laughs> in order to get to the wedding. <laughs> I think the Middle East will be changed finally by young people and women. Together we can make our region more promising, more peaceful. The sooner, the better. I am convinced there will be peace between the Palestinians and us. I don't know how can you manage a crisis. If you can manage, you wouldn't have a crisis. I feel myself as a human being who is quite happy, optimistic. And the greatest thing in life, be honest. Nothing is wiser than be honest. The advice I give you, live as a, an optimist. I tried it for 90 years, it's not bad. <laughs> we are grateful to you to have shared with us your conclusions of so many years of exciting life and of optimistic life. Better to create hope than to suggest hopelessness. Let's change the world. A very moving movie for me. Dear friends, I would like to begin with my most heartfelt thanks to Hilde and to Professor Schwab. Your unique friendship with my father, spanning well over three decades, was of great importance to him. He found your conversations rifting, greatly appreciated your important work based on shared values and vision. 
He cherished your close bond. Dear Klaus, dear WEF family, thank you for your friendship and support. They serve as pillars of strength during these times of sadness. Today we say farewell to President Obama, whose unique and successful term has come to an end, whose support for Israel was unwavering, and whose friendship with my father was deep and meaningful. Today, President Trump begins his presidency. We wish him best of luck in the hope that his term in office will bring prosperity, unity, success and peace to the people of the United States and the world over. In 2014, when Professor Schwab honored my father with the first award, the Spirit of Davos, he said to him, you are the oldest participant on paper, but in your mind, you are the, the youngest. My father in turn always said, count the number of dreams that you have in your life, sorry, count the number of achievements that you have in your life, and compare them to the number of dreams that you have in your head. If you have more dreams than achievements, then you know that you are still young. And indeed, my father was forever young, a constant pupil who always explored, a once-in-a-generation statesman, a man of great vision and optimism, saying during one of his speeches at Davos, better create hope than suggest hopelessness. Live as an optimist. I've tried it for 90 years, and it wasn't so bad. And though he was 93, he left us too soon. My father was one of the founding fathers of the State of Israel, holding almost every possible government position, from Minister of Defense to Prime Minister, and last as the ninth President of the State of Israel. He worked tirelessly to promote peace, and he was at the forefront of transforming Israel into a global leader in innovation. But most of all, he was a believer, a believer in people and their ability to do good. This belief in people was one of the reasons he so enjoyed participating in this unique gathering every year for decades. Here he met with global leaders from all walks of life, and to all, he spoke about their part in their, and their important goal of improving the state of the world. He mentioned how the biggest revolutions in history took place without one shot being fired, without bloodshed and hate, but rather through harnessing technology and the work of global enterprises. On this very stage, he said, we are in a new era with an old mind. We must catch up. Science is uncontrollable, not by distance, not by fences, nor enemies. In this new era, he believed, for the first time in history, scientific and technological advancements are more important than natural resources. The empires of tomorrow will be the empires of the mind. He also importantly noted that technology without morals can be dangerous, just as morals without scientific advancements may lead to poverty. And so last July, together with Israel Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Rivlin, he launched his flagship initiative within the framework of the Paris Center for Peace important projects, the National Israeli Innovation Center. The Israeli Innovation Center will tell the remarkable story of Israel, the innovation nation, highlight the global human impact of its achievements, and explore how to expand the startup nation into the startup region, building bridges of peace and prosperity. World leaders will be invited to learn about Israeli breakthroughs 
global companies will be able to connect with the local ecosystem. And youngsters from all backgrounds and religions will be able to reveal the entrepreneur and the peace builder within themselves. According to my father's vision, such innovation centers will be established in multiple locations around the world with our message of innovation, creativity, optimism, and the pursuit of peace echoing across the globe. I invite you all to partner with us on this meaningful task. My conviction is strong, and I'm privileged to walk in my father's path, carrying on steadfast in the mission to realize his vision and honor his legacy. And I'm grateful to count all of you among our friends and supporters who join us on this important journey. Dear friends, I would like to leave you with a final quote from my dear father. Looking back, he said, I only regret that our dreams were not big enough. Let's look ahead. Let's dream big and make the world peaceful, a better place for all people and for every person. Thank you so much.